Now we're cooking. It's a coach. You're set for Madden football on EA Sports. Coming up, running back Dalvin Cook. He's back and coming off a big game a weekend ago as it'll be the Minnesota Vikings as they get set to match up against the New York Jets. I'll have scores around the league for you at the half, but it's time for a little football. So we'll hand it over to our broadcast team, Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, Coach. EA Sports coverage of the National Football League is on the air. A few moments ago, the crowd here was on their feet as their beloved Jets made their way out of the tunnel. They're ready to go. We're ready to go. It should be a good one as those New York Jets get set to face off with the Minnesota Vikings. Hi again, everyone, with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. And, Charles, you look at this Jets ball club. Now, losers their last time out, so they'll look to make amends here. And one of the best ways you can do that is to be at home, and they are. They're going to try and ride that home crowd and that wave of emotion to a victory in this one. Meanwhile, for our visitors, the Vikings, they come in off the very rare tie a game ago. And it'll be interesting to see what their mindset is going into this game. Sometimes that can be a deflator, and sometimes that can just really make you mad and more determined the next time out. Getting toward the halfway point of the NFL season. Week 7 is underway on EA Sports. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. So here's the Viking offense making their way out. They'll be let out by their big offseason signing from Michigan State in his seventh year. It's the veteran Kirk Cousins. I do hear some mild criticism of Kirk Cousins and his play the last few seasons in Washington, mainly because the team was just 24-23-1. and one. But I also saw a quarterback with an offensive line that essentially introduced itself to each other in the huddle before the first snap in Seattle that's one of the best defense in the NFL. Win that game with big plays late. This is a tough-minded, hard-nosed, gritty quarterback that tends to inspire a team to play better around him. This will be a two-yard loss on the play. And that'll make it second and 12. For the opening play, the drive goes backwards. Now they'll come up on second and 12. On second down, Cook. And he's able to plow forward up to about the 29, just shy of the 30. And five yards on the carry there, and it leaves him with third and about six yards to go. Well, let's take a look here at the offense for Minnesota. The Vikings' top two receivers match up with any pair in the NFL. And I'm talking about Adam Thielen and Stephon Diggs. And how about this? Both underdog success stories. Diggs, a fifth round in 2015. Adam Thielen, undrafted in 2014. Now they're helping set the pace for wide receivers in the league. Into a double team, and it's intercepted. Marcus May with a pick, and he's able to bring it up five yards shy of midfield to the 45-yard line. Certainly not how they envisioned ending their opening drive here in the first quarter. Too many ones in this play. First quarter, first drive, first interception thrown. And that last one, that hurts. Now the Jets offense gets ready to head back on the field. Bridgewater and the Jets come up now first and 10 at the 45. Now a first carry for the former Cleveland Brown, Isaiah Crowell. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. First play of the drive, a success, 19 yards. That's a very nice game there, a confidence-building run. Love the execution up front, and the way he pressed the hole, absolutely perfect. So from the 36 now, first and 10. They keep it with Crowell on first. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. That didn't appear to be a run blitz. He just darted in once he saw the run develop. 
that appeared to be a case of see ball, get ball. Second down, Bridgewater. It's caught on the left side by Kurz. And they'll be inside the 35 now at the 34-yard line. Only three yards on the catch. It's third down. When you see zone defense and you know you've got a drag route on as your primary call, you've got to be really careful as a passer about how far you let your guy go because he might wander into some tough coverage. It'll be a gain of eight, but it'll also lead to a fourth down. Well, we hear so often how tackling has become almost a lost art in the NFL game, but it's so important to tackle well on these receivers, especially in a play like this one. Third down, they gave him the underneath stuff. you got to go up and make the tackle right away. So an opening drive field goal maybe doesn't whip this crowd into a frenzy, but I think that they will take the early lead. There's no doubt about it. They will always take the early lead, and maybe that celebration comes later if they play well and they can break things open. But right now, this is all about letting the offense just get settled in. Cousins and the Vikings with a first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. And Rudolph has it left side. That throw good for four. It's second down. And a look now at how the Jets line up defensively. I want to highlight the back end of this defense and especially focus in on the safety duo of Jamal Adams and Marcus May. Adams, their first round pick. May, their second round pick. And both had tremendous rookie seasons. Both can play free safety or strong safety. I call them mirrors. What one is doing, the other is doing the opposite. Again, this is Cook. And able to stay on his feet past the 30 to about the 33-yard line. Big Leonard Williams there on the stop. We haven't seen much from him running the football here in this first quarter. No, you're right about that. We haven't seen much of him at all so far. They stacked him up pretty well, but when you're trying to run the football, sometimes you've got to play the long game. Keep handing it to him, and some of those runs that aren't working now, they turn into six, seven, eight, and maybe more later on. And that is incomplete. That makes them now 0 for 2 here in the first quarter on third down conversions. And now they'll look to their defense because they need them to step up so they don't fall further behind here in the early going. So on fourth down, here's Ryan Quigley now to kick this one away. Taking it about the 16. 12 yards on the return that time. And the Jets will take over first and 10. The Jets' offense now works their way back onto the field. And they're not going to play this conservative, I don't think. They had the field goal last time, and they're up, but they're looking to put a drive in the end zone. Oh, I agree with you totally. No one is, goes out on the field and says, all right, let's just settle for three, except in certain situations, trying to ice a game, that sort of deal. Most of the time, it's end zone, and that's what you're thinking, and I believe that's exactly what they're thinking as they begin this one. Yeah, no quarterback ever goes out there saying, hey, let's get three, right? <laughs> not one that I've ever met. It'll be a pickup of just two, and it'll make it a second down. Everyone's got to be able to catch the football. Doesn't matter what position you play, but if you're on offense, be aware a ball may come your way. So second and eight here after the pass play for two yards on first down. On the counter, it's Corral. And he was able to shed the tackle, but the reserves come in for the stop. Only a yard on the pickup, and now they've got a third down and eight. Sometimes your philosophies get challenged at times you don't want them to. They did try to stick to the running game on the first two plays. Didn't amount to much. And now facing a third and long at the outset of this drive. They get seven there, but it brings up fourth. So much about offense is what you call hidden yardage. You know, you, you throw the ball to someone, they catch it, and then they can make a big play. You know, they create a play, run after catch. They did a really nice job there of limiting that and keeping them from a first down. Yeah, stopped him in his tracks. And now out comes Minnesota. And the results for them have not been strong to this point. Two drives have ended in a turnover and then a punt. So would it be too snarky for me to say that they've shown improvement? Because you had two, right. two drives with turnovers. <laughs> now they punted it away, so at least they didn't turn it over. So that's good, right? You're going to get some angry users <laughs> reaching out to you on social media. Well, I don't mean to be. I was actually looking for the positive. Silver lining, you know. Here's Cook as they begin on the ground. And he goes nowhere. He'll lose yardage back at the 17. 
A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. I like the strategy. Extra tight ends, extra beef. They want to run the football, but that means they probably want to run it inside. If you get strung out on the perimeter, you're in peril. Yeah, we saw the result. Negative yardage. Cousins. Incomplete. Right side, the tight end Rudolph. That one goes for 36 yards. There will always be a place for methodically marching the ball downfield. But when you can pick it up in big chunks and strike like that, have explosive plays, that's often the difference in winning and losing. Those types of plays that can knock a defense off balance, that'll drive a team towards a victory. So the line of scrimmage moves all the way across the 50 now as they come up first and 10. First down, here's the run with Cook. He doesn't find a ton of space following the display of quick feet down just inside the 45. The numbers a week ago for Cook. 22 carries, 135 yards, big game. And the way they ran the ball in last week's game has to be satisfying to their entire staff because they're seeing not just a back gain big yardage, but they're seeing an offensive line really in sync. They'll run it now out of the gun, and he's going to get stopped up quickly. Give him a yard down to the 43. Well, that call makes sense because they've been throwing it well on this drive, and once again, they show passing formation, showing the shotgun. Then they ran out of it. That's a nice play by them defensively, though, to hold it to a short game. And he's going to get this one down to the edge of the red zone. Where they convert on third with a gain of 22. The goal for any offense versus his own defense, find the holes where guys are available and put the ball on the receiver before any defender can step up and fill it. They did it well there. Perfectly executed crossing route. First red zone chance now for the Vikings. First and 10 right at the 20. They'll run it now out of the gun. And they'll get to him just inside the 15. Even after the strong run we just saw, they're able to corral him quickly defensively. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. Pretty effective run there, and now they can start to smell that end zone. Pound the rock. Make sure you use your old line to set the tone of dominance and physicality, and pound the rock. Back to the ground, this time Cook. And here he'll get it down to the seven. The six yards on the pickup, and it leaves him with a first and goal. All right, Brand, I know we're in the early going here, but those kind of runs, they're going to open up a world of opportunities for this offense going forward. Throwing Cousins. Nothing on that one. It'll be second down. They'll try again here from the seven on second and goal. They'll give it to him up the middle. And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. Five yards on the pickup, and that'll make it third and goal. And, Brad, they went to a nickel defense, and that's a surprise this close to the goal line because ordinarily you use... The back end of the end zone, the sidelines, is extra defenders, and you want bigger people on the field to try and help against the run. Delay of game, offense. Yeah, that'll be accepted, of course, and that moves him back five. Still third down. How crucial will those five yards be? We'll see as they come up again here, third and goal. From the shotgun, it's Cousins. And that'll be caught by Diggs for a Minnesota touchdown. Stephon Diggs, his second touchdown on the season. And the Vikings have taken a first quarter lead. And all about timing there on that short slant, Charles. Exactly right. That was timed up so well. The route, the throw, touchdown. Now for the extra point, Daniel Carlson.
Extra point by Carlson, up and good. And that makes it a 7-3 lead. So that one a pretty time-consuming 10-play drive. And it all culminates in a touchdown for Minnesota. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. Our Darius Stewart now on the return. Solid return, pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32-yard line. And New York set to take the field and hoping to do better than they did their last possession when they punted the football. Appeal to the vanity of your offensive line. Tell them that they control your fate. Leverage guys. Win the line of scrimmage. If you do that, you start to win first down. You win second down. And guess what? You start accumulating first downs. And that's what they need in order to not pump the ball again. First down, Bridgewater. Pro left side of the tight end, Walford. And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. These are his numbers from last week's contest. 14 catches, 104 yards, and a score as well. And he's able to pull that last pass in, but this is usually a pretty tough unit to try and maneuver against. They're in the top 10 in the league against the pass, and you and I both know there's not much difference between 1 and 10. And before they can run another play, the clock hits triple zeros. And time is up on the first quarter. 7-3 the score. And we will return to MetLife Stadium after this. With Charles Davis, Brandon Gordon with you. It's the Jets in possession as we begin quarter number two here. They're looking at a second and short yardage to start things out. Here's Bridgewater. Under a heavy rush, and down he goes. Eric Kendricks coming on the blitz. He gets him for a loss of seven. They just gave up a sack there, and if I'm not mistaken, they gave up four last week, didn't they? Yes. They're just looking really porous, aren't they? They really are, and I'm wondering if they're going to have to start thinking about keeping the tight end in, maybe mm. a back, someone to help assist, because right now, their quarterback's been getting hit a lot in the last couple of games. Third and long now after the sack, and we'll see if Bridgewater has a response. From the gun, Bridgewater. And he's going to go down again. Well, they went with the nickel. They throw in an extra defensive back. Coverage was very good. Yeah, it was exactly as you would expect. A passing down. You bring in the nickel package. Just as you described, the coverage was excellent and allowed one of their linemen to end up getting to the quarterback. Here's Lachlan Edwards now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. Oh, look at that. Oh, look at him turn. <laughs> it's a 45-yard punt, but a decent return there of nine yards. And the Vikings will take over here first and ten. The Vikings offense now, they get ready to head back on the field. And they had to go a long way on their last drive to score the touchdown. This time, they get at least a little bit more of a cushion with field position. I have to think that with this field position, after what they did on the last drive, they might want to take a shot right now and try and cut down the length of the drive. First down, here's Cousins. Open here, Adam Thielen. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. First down yardage on the first play of the drive. Give him 14. throw for Cousins and this one hauled in by Rudolph and he gets this inside the 35 yard line it's a pickup of 16 there and it'll lead to a new set of downs and there's another completion to the tight end and let's face it it is hard to overthrow 
a six foot six inch target. <laughs> it is indeed. Quarterbacks like their speed guys. They like that huge six six target that they've got in him. They really do, and it, it reminds me of what one great tight end told me once. He had told his quarterback, "Just make sure you throw it up there. You know, kind of like put up in the top shelf where the kids can't get it." Hand off comes to Cook. <laughs> And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. 11 more on that one, and another first down. At this stage of the game, the run pass numbers are a little bit out of whack because most of the yardage has come through the air. But in a sense, that just sets things up for big runs like that because the defense might be a little bit off balance. They pick up another first down with that run. They run again on first down, Cook. And he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. Call it a loss of two on the play. And it'll be second and 12. Uh, it's a tough one right there. He ran right into the teeth of the blitz as the linebacker was freed up in order to stuff that one for a loss. I think quarterbacks got to see that. Got to find a way to audible into something a little more advantageous. taken down near the 20 at the 21. It's Steve McClendon that time who winds up getting him down. Some of the most unselfish players on any football team, defensive tackles, because we ask them to just eat up blocks and allow other people to make tackles. But when he can make a play himself, as we just saw there, that's a big day. Here's Cousins. Complete to right. And on this one, he'll get to the 15, right at the 15-yard line. The completion good for only six, and that'll bring up fourth. Daniel Carlson now for the Viking field goal. Carlson able to put this one through, and they push the lead up to a touchdown now at 10 to 3. So unable to convert for the touchdown inside the red zone, but they do come away with three. Yeah, it's a 32-yarder. That's essentially an extra point nowadays, right? Because it's 33 as a general rule for these guys. So it should be a simple kick. But you know what's really strange nowadays? When they miss an extra point, I think they carry that with them longer than missing a field goal because an extra point's supposed to be automatic. Absolutely, and I would think even field goals inside of 30 yards, even though they're substantially shorter than a PAT, it, it just has a different feel, doesn't it? A different it? feel, a different vibe. That's what I get from all the kickers I talk to. They always say, if I miss an extra point, that's the one that bothers me more. Bridgewater now looking to throw on first. Here's Wolford over the middle. And he'll get to the 29-yard line brought down there. That throw good for four. It's second down. I think it's okay there. They didn't get a whole lot on that play, but it's nice to have a safety valve that's built like this guy. Big target, guy you can spot pretty easily. Put it on him when your other targets aren't open. Now, meanwhile, here's a second down throw that's knocked away and incomplete. On third down, Bridgewater. He's got Curse. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Give him 15 yards on that one, and the Jets move the chains. And another thing that makes the comeback route really effective is that oftentimes after you've made the initial move, receiver's breaking away from the defensive back, and that makes it a really tough play to defend. A nice chunk of yardage picked up there. A first down carry now for Crowell. And a good pick up there. He gets about six up to midfield. Frustrating for a defense, energizing for an offense. Finding a way to create that type of yardage in your running game, that'll make the guys carrying the ball very, very happy. Bridgewater now from the 50. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. The beauty of being able to play a zone defense when you can sit back and see the ball coming out of the quarterback's hands, 
and guess what? Creates a lot of confusion. Kind of a muddle in the middle of the field where you go make a play on the football. The Jets on third down. They've only converted once in four tries. This is third and four. Out of the gun, Bridgewater. Steps away to his left. He can run for it, and he will. That was a broken play, but it ends up being a good play. The scramble goes for 20. On third and short, not only did he get away from the rush and pick up a first down, he picked up a whole lot more than that. And how did he get it done? Evaded the rush, kept his poise, and then how about him directing traffic as he moved downfield to pick up extra blockers? A really nice run. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. On first and ten, Bridgewater. Buying time to his left. Big yardage there on the scramble. It gets him a first down. Containing him is becoming a big problem. We've already seen this once earlier on this drive. Yeah, and so now two times this has happened. Do you adjust something? Yeah, I think you... And he is in! Touchdown, New York! Bilal Powell, his third touchdown now on the year. And the Jets are an extra point away from tying this thing up. Solid job up front. Really just a solid job all the way around to get that one in. That was well executed, wasn't it? Well blocked, well run. End result, six points. Touchdown. Cairo Santos on to try the extra point. Santos with the extra point. And we are even at 10 apiece. So we're right back where we started. All even as the kick's away. This one fielded at the five. He spins free. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. And now out comes Minnesota. And last time able to get three. It's not what they wanted. They wanted six, but they got at least something. They mustered something out of the drive. They'll take it. Just, I, I like the way you, you've described it. Not ideal, but they'll take it. Anything to put some points on the board. But this time on offense, they don't even want to see the field goal kicker trout on the field. <laughs> they want that ball in the end zone. They'll be taken down. The Jets get in there for the sack. David Bass not dropping into coverage. He comes on the blitz and takes him down for a loss of nine. Brandon, if I'm an offensive coordinator and I see an all-out rush like that, I file it away because I'm going to use their aggressiveness against them as this game goes on. I'm going to hit them with a screen soon. After the sack, it's second and 19, and the road gets a bit tougher from here. Working out of the gun, Cousins. Left side caught by Diggs. Stephon Diggs. Touchdown, Vikings. Stephon Diggs, 83 yards, and the Vikings get the quick strike touchdown. I know Paul Revere talked about by land or by sea, right? You know, one by land, two by sea. He didn't mention air because right now we're seeing a big-time performance, aren't we? That's two touchdowns so far in this game. Where would you pull that one from? And, you know, every now and then I actually listened in history class. <laughs> and you're just a scholar all the way around. You're reading all the time. I like that you fit that into the broadcast. <laughs> you know, I just grab a nugget when I can. Carlson on for the PAT. Extra point by Carlson, up and good. And that makes it a 17-10 score. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. The New York set to take the field. And that last drive, it was all about the ground game. Ground and pound. And I don't care how we're playing the game these days. Offensive linemen still want to fire out and smack the guy opposite them and move the football on the ground. They feel better about that. 
That's what they want to do. That's how they want to play, and that's how they got it done. Yeah, they got it for a touchdown last drive. Let's see what happens here. Now Bridgewater. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. Give him 13 yards on the opening play of the drive and also give him a first down. Well, that was man coverage. So once he decides to run with the football, there's no one to account for him, and he turns it into a nice game. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Here's a give to Crowell. And he'll get this out past the 45 to the 47. A nice run there, nine yards, and it'll be second down. Some runs are blocked so well, you almost forget that someone has to carry the ball to gain the yardage. The leverage by the offensive line to create space up front, really well done. Bridgewater now on second down. That's caught right side by Anderson. And he'll get it down to the 47 here. Third catch in this first half for him, and this one is a first down. now hitting on 80 percent of his passes in the early going eight of ten it's first down from the shotgun it's bridgewater it's caught by quincy and Unwa. and he is tackled inside the 40 not quite to the 35 it'll go as a gain of 11 and a jets first down to go here in the first half. We'll come back to MetLife Stadium after this short timeout. And we'll remind you that coming up at halftime, we'll join Jonathan Coachman and the gang in Orlando. Coach will have stats and scores from the early games going on here around the NFL. down throw for Bridgewater. The grab made by Curse over the middle. And he'll go down at the 28. Give him nine there on the first down completion. Nothing fancy on first down, but a very consistent type of a play. Hit that slant. A lot of people call it an extension of the running game, and it can be if that pass is completed, because you hit a guy on the run like that, you often can go for big yardage. Sets him up nicely for second down, staying ahead of schedule. That last catch short of the marker by just a yard leaves him with a very manageable second and one. Bridgewater again. He'll try and set up the screen. It's complete. And he went nowhere. He'll lose yardage back to the 29. That'll be a loss of a yard, and it leads to a third down. Time to give a little credit here. That was an excellent read by the guys on the defensive side of the ball. Oh, you're crediting your defense. Got to credit them on that one because they tried to fool them, right? Tried to trick them, ran a screen, and they went to it and smothered it for a loss of yardage. The Jets on third down. Two for five to this point. Here it's third and three. They'll try to run for it with Crowell. And the reinforcements come in as they're going to stop him behind the line. And now the Vikings are going to stop it here on defense with a timeout. As they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. And now following that timeout, the defense back out onto the field. And Santos able to put this one up and through. It's good. And that will cut this lead back down to four now. It's 
No problems in the field goal department so far. He's two for two. Pretty reliable here in this game, isn't he? And to me, that bodes well for them. If they need him late in the game, his confidence should be sky high. And after the main field goal, Santos back out there to kick it away. To return, here comes Marcus Sherrills. And nice work on the return as he'll start their drive just past the 30-yard line. Here comes Kirk Cousins now to lead his offense back out there. And he's looked pretty good. He does have the one interception, but two touchdown passes so far. Your analysis. They'll take the offset. When you talk about throwing two touchdown passes, no one wants to see an interception thrown, but those things happen in the course of a ball game and over the course of a season. But throwing two touchdown passes, that's why the team has an advantage. That's what they're looking for more of. They'll be hoping to make it a 3-1 to one ratio here in the second quarter. An ideal beginning of the drive there is they'll get 20 and a first down. Talk about a big first half. Already has the two touchdowns, adding to his receiving total there and picking up the first down. He's coming off the line so fast. I think he's intimidating the defensive backs with his explosiveness, and he's chipping away at their confidence. Cousins now over 200 yards already in this first half. It's first and 10. From the gun, here's Cousins. He's got the connection over the middle to Diggs. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. As they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. So second in inches after that first down completion went just shy of the marker. From the shotgun, it's Cousins. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. You've always been very good about checking my math. Am I correct? That's the first time that it's been incomplete when they've thrown it to him? Yes, he had caught every other ball coming his way. So they feel like they've got something really good going there, and they're going to continue to go there until the defense makes an adjustment and takes it away. Well, they finally made an adjustment there. We'll see if they can build on that stop. Throwing his cousins. Got him in. It's right. And he'll go out of bounds after taking it a little further down inside the 40. A three-yard gain and enough for the first down. And Brandon, from our time in college football, where receivers weren't running the traditional NFL route tree, one thing they did learn, find open areas, find soft spots, and set up and catch the ball. And I think we just saw that there. Yeah, we saw that indeed picking up the first. On first and ten, Cousins. And the Jets pressure too much as down he goes. Henry Anderson in there to sack him for a loss of six. Okay, was it a breakdown in protection? Did the running back not pick him up? What does it really matter? Sometimes it's just a great play made by the defense. Big time sack. Certainly going to need to be a bit better here on second and 16. Cousins now. Throwing for his running back, and he's got him complete. And it's a fumble, and the Jets have recovered. Good starting position for the Jets as they come up first and 10. Final play of the half, Bridgewater. He's going to float in a double coverage, and it's intercepted. Picked off by the former first-rounder, Trey Waynes. And his guys are going to take over at the 21-yard line. So we hit halftime with our visitors, the Vikings, taking the lead to the locker room. As we'll send you down the coast now to Orlando, that's where we find Jonathan Coachman, ready with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. A lot to get to here as some of the division races starting to take shape as we look around the NFL here in week number seven. Lastly, let's check on one final game for you. And you can see they are scoreless as they play the second quarter. 
in our game, there's a reason why he was so sought after in the offseason. It's Kirk Cousins with a strong first half. He's thrown for over 200 yards already, and his guys have the lead as well. As we get you back to Brandon Godden. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. The Vikings have to like their position. They've got the lead. They get this football as well as we are back and underway for the second half. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get it up to the 29-yard line. Getting set to go again here, Teddy Bridgewater coming back onto the field. And he's had some time to chew on that interception he threw on his last drive back in the first half. Well, normally we say, want well, to get him right back out on the field and play again, right? But as you mentioned, had the halftime, had to stew about it a little bit. Maybe he'll have a chance to relax a little and kind of laugh and chuckle and let it go. He'll hope to respond positively here to start the third quarter. And he'll get it up to the 33-yard line. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. That's a staple of this offense, drag route to the tight end. Yeah, he's unable to use his size to break off much more yardage after the catch, but still an effective gain nonetheless. Ten yards is the pickup, good enough for a jet first down. Well, they obviously red man covers their partner, and he got downfield, broke down the defender. What do you mean by that? Yeah, he made him think he was going to run a different route. Probably thought he's going to take it upfield. Then he curls back inside for the completion. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. Let's just break this down and make it pretty simple. Key to the drag route, letting the play develop, finding the hole in the defense, and giving your athlete, yes, athlete, a chance to make something happen once he has the ball in his hands. Dumps off to Powell. And he'll lose yardage here. Back at the 47. Now as we look down, it appears we've got a jet shaken up on the play. We'll check on his status when we get back. The Jets on third down. They've converted just two for six thus far. This will be third and six. And again, it's Bridgewater. Sliding out of the pocket. He may try. Now he's hit. And Bridgewater loses the football. And this belongs to the Vikings. He had gained really good yardage, but that's what you tell your quarterbacks, right? Get down after you've got the run. You don't have to prove your toughness. You know, I think that's what a lot of coaches are trying to preach to their guys. Get the yardage, get down, protect the football and protect yourself from extra hits as well. Here's Stephon Diggs as he and the rest of the offense get ready to go again. And I know that they've double teamed him a couple times, but not a ton. Whatever they're doing isn't working. He's up over 100 yards. We'll see how they adjust. And when they do that, they weaken their defense in other places as well. And how many times have we done games where we've seen a guy have a big game like this? But it's usually not by himself, is it? Right. Usually it opens it up for other people to have big games as well. And this one caught along the sideline, but they say already out of bounds and a throw didn't give him a chance to turn it up field and that brings up second down but not to get too over critical there because he knows what he's doing but his shoulders looked a little off kilter there when he threw that i don't think you're being overly critical there you're just analyzing it and he gets those shoulders right that pass will go from incomplete to complete to throw his cousins throwing middle but it's incomplete stefan diggs his intended receiver and it's third down a good number of coaches at any time they call an in route are really worried about the play because there's so much traffic ordinarily that the ball has to get through to get to the receiver. And on that play, it was batted down. The Vikings on third down. They've hit at 50%, three of six to this point. This is third and 10. Now Cousins. And he's got Kyle. And able to rip off a big chunk of yardage before being dropped inside the 40. And a nice gain of 21 yards. First down, here's Cousins. And right with it here, over the middle. And they'll be inside the 35 now at the 34-yard line. A gain of six there on first. In today's football, where receivers break tackles, make people miss, <laughs> get upfield for the extra yardage, 
When you see a play like that where it's caught and he's dropped on the spot, that's a big-time play by the defense. They get six on the pickup there as the drive will continue. Now Cousins. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. Give him 12 yards on that one. It earns him a fresh set of downs. Partner, this is one of the best routes anyone can have in their offensive playbook. Tough to defend because you think it's a go route, and then he breaks it back on the comeback. There's one other thing you need as well. A well-thrown ball. Exactly right. Got a guy who has some precision in throwing the football because of the timing of the route. They'll run it now out of the gun. He will push his way down to about the 14. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. Sometimes play calls boil down to philosophy. You know you're facing one of the top 10 units against the run in the NFL. So do you decide to keep smashing against them, or do you decide to throw the ball here? And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. That's very well timed there defensively, because it's not a bad throw, but the collision came at the exact time he was reaching to bring in the football. Really, really well done. Decent offense, just better defense. I think you're right. On third down, Cousins. And this is going to be incomplete. Not only was the call spot on, how about the execution of that defense right there? The zone was absolutely locked up tight. He was trying to force it in there on third down. But if there's a time to force it, he felt like he needed to make a play, right? Yeah, exactly right. Third down, you got to try and find something. There's nothing available there for him. The kick by Carlson is good. And that'll make this a seven-point game. Well, looking at it from a defensive perspective, that keeps the deficit very, very manageable. You know, all things considered, not a bad job on the defensive side. I would say that you've pointed out something pretty good right there, and that is you actually have both sides happy with that exchange. You know, happy in quotes, of course. One team, hey, we've kept, kept it within range. The other side saying, hey, we put points on the board and did stretch out the lead. Let's see how this one turns out. Yeah, still bottom line, though, three points for the opening drive of the third quarter. So out now come the Jets. And last time they coughed it up, led to a field goal. They're fortunate that it only led to a field goal, but still, they're not happy about it. Could you sense the relief, though, when they only gave up the field yeah. goal and they were able to trot back out on the field and start this drive? A little more pep in their step because they didn't cost their team a touchdown. But they know they've got to do it a lot better than they did on the last possession. The coach will just be relieved, though, if they recoup with a score here, right? I think coach would be ecstatic to see them pick themselves back up and now take it downfield, punching the end zone without turning it over. That was a nicely run slant route, and what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps and cuts towards the middle of the field. And now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and get the quarterback a really nice target. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. They'll run it now out of the gun. And now they're going to get him down right at the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain that time as it's going to leave him with a third and about three to go. Then he got off the end there very quickly to make that play. Yeah, it was almost like the bullet train, wasn't it? I mean, just zoom. Quick, quick, quick. And what a terrific play. Holding him to no gain. A gain of seven and they pick up the first. Would it be safe to say that as precise as routes are supposed to be run in the NFL, maybe they're not quite as precise in college ball? That's accurate, yeah. And I think we saw a college route in the NFL there. Just find the soft spot, find the dead zone, and find the first down. And that's what he just did. So that'll back him up five. Still first down. So a little bit of a stiffer challenge now. First and 15 following the delay of game. Bridgewater. He rifles one that's intercepted. Picked up by Anderson Dejo. And he's going to score. It's a Viking touchdown. 
that was an interception, but on the field, the guys who are picking it off, they're not saying that. What word are they using? It's Oski. And that means catch the ball and go the other way. That's your vernacular. I've never heard anybody say Oski. Ask around. They'll tell you. Carlson now to add the extra point. Extra point by Carlson, up and good. And the decision to just kick the extra point winds up successful. This will be fielded at the eight. And a nice job there as he gets this one up just shy of the 35-yard line at the 34. And the Jets set to take the field. And they've sort of lost their way, partner. How do they recalibrate and get this proverbial train back on track? Well, this is where leadership really comes into play. How's the head coach handling it? The offensive coordinator? Sometimes they just make a joke. All right, guys, you had your fun? All right. Throw it out the window. Yeah, let's get back on track here. And sometimes that'll work just fine. I guess it's time now to lean on that leadership. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. They may want to go back to that one. First play of the drive, good for 15 and a first down. Sometimes it's hard to believe, but there are times this game is about patience, isn't it? Has had the game he expected, but that run there, that may get him going. I was just going to say, maybe that gives him a little juice, because you're right, he struggled, especially in that first half. Yeah, and I know the great ones always think to themselves, just hang in there. I'm just one big carry away from busting this open. That's a good start for him. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. And that one goes incomplete. They tried something out of the bag of tricks, but it's incomplete and now second down. To throw is Bridgewater. And he's going to be intercepted a third time. Picked up by Mike Hughes. And he's able to get it back here to the 43-yard line. That is now seven, seven interceptions between last week and this week. Three in this game, four a week ago. And I saw the head coach write on his play sheet, make a little note. I hope he's writing self-scout. Bring in the guys that scout games for you with a different eye and watch him and see what's going on and maybe they can pick up what the flaws are and hopefully they can correct them. Kirk Cousins now gearing up to lead this offense back out there. How do you think he personally is evaluating his game so far? He was pretty good in the first half, been good so far here in the third quarter. He's got to like it, right? Not looking for the dramatics here. Not trying to set the world on fire in terms of stats. It's almost like you're driving. Hands at 10 and 2, alert for anything out there, watching for trouble on the road, and making sure you get the team home. The bus driver. See if he can drive the bus here again on this drive. Just what you want on a first down run. Call it eight yards. And it's second and two. On the ground, it's Cook. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. Give him 11 yards that time and a new set of downs. They're trying to show that they can run the ball and protect this lead. Give it to the backs, play a little bit of keep away, don't you think? And that's probably a good philosophy at this point, going to make that defense stand up and stop them. Following the good run by Cook, here's another first and 10. Right back to him on first down. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. Third quarter, and you've got the lead. You're not ready to go into that four-minute offense to close the game out, but a running game can really benefit your team right now. They'll run it now out of the gun. And not much running room. Down to the 32. And defensive back Jamal Adams in on the stop. Whenever we talk about the best strong safeties, one word constantly comes up, and that's instincts. Being able to diagnose runner pass and make the appropriate moves. He crashed down hard there. He was ready for that running play. They'll run it. Here's Cook. Call it no game there, and it leads to a fourth down. As usual, the hallmark of a good run defense, linebackers making plays near the line of scrimmage. Absolutely nowhere to run there. So now here comes the field goal team for the third time today. This is a 49-yard attempt. Right hatch. And his kick is good. Didn't hit it all that well, but he got enough on it to put it through. And that will extend their lead even further. 
So three field goals that he's hit now. This last one helps him stretch out the lead. He's been solid, hasn't he? And he lives up to the adage that every offensive coach has ever said to us. We want to end every possession with a kick, right? For them, it's either extra point, field goal, or at worst, a punt. In this case, it's been threes. Then a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. And New York set to take the field. They are looking to make a bit of a 180. They are sputtering right now. And frankly, I think it's time to call your playmakers together and say, all right, guys, we're going to lean on you through this patch. We need you to get us back on track and get us going in the right direction. So you're calling plays geared to them. Not necessarily what you look at your plays, oh, this hurts the defense. I want the ball in the hands of X, Y, and Z and see if we can move forward. So don't get too cute. Go to the playmakers. They like going to him in the slot. He catches another one. I think this comes under the heading of until they stop him, why not go back to him? He has something going really well. Great working relationship with the guy throwing the ball, and they keep making the connection. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And at a 42-yard line here and brought down there. Seven yards there, good enough to move the sticks. So many teams want to throw the ball in this situation nowadays, but I love watching a team that has enough confidence to go ahead and run the football in that situation. That's almost a tendency breaker. game working they'll stick with it on first down looking for a crease can't find one stopped at the line of scrimmage no gain on the play there second down no gain on that run and while the team is down there's still time to come back and win the football game if i'm the offensive coordinator though i've got to think about moving at a faster pace and maybe opening things up a little bit and throwing it a little bit more here's wolford over the middle and he'll go down and that will do it for the third quarter of action. So they'll get a little extra time to come up with his third down play as we play three quarters. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now here on EA Sports. It's Jet football, but they trail here as we start the fourth quarter. On third down, Bridgewater. Got an open man, it's a noon one. And he'll get it out to midfield. Let's see, yeah, they'll spot it right at midfield at the 50. The completion good for only six, and that'll bring up fourth. You got the big lead defensively, willing to give them that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle them after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. Delay of game, offense. That's going to set him back five yards. A critical one here if they're going to have any shot at this thing. So they'll go for it on fourth down. As expected, they're going for it to keep the drive alive. He'll rifle this from deep right side. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert, and they turn it over. The Todd Bowles tried it, went for it, but it didn't pay off. And the Vikings, they have the football now in excellent field position. Minnesota. Been a very strong performance for them, really, on both sides of the football. The turnover on downs is the most recent example, and now, obviously, they're in a great spot here. Yeah, if you're over on the bench right now, you're shaking hands with your teammate, you're hugging him, give him a little dap. Been a big, big performance for them. Now you just don't get careless. Take care of the ball on the way out. Now a run with Cook. Cook able to escape. And he goes down, but not before getting this inside the 25. That good for 22 and a first down. This is a little bit like baseball here. Strong up the middle. 
Both sides want to be that. In this case, the offense ended up winning the ultimate battle. And those big runs between the tackles, that's a little deflating for a defense, isn't it? It really is because that's where your strength's supposed to be. You're supposed to be in a spot where they can't make that yardage there. You're supposed to send them outside. Not in this case. Short gain here, down to the 22. Bottom line, they want to keep this clock rolling, so they'll take that one right there. They just want to keep falling forward, and they want to put the onus on the big fellas up front in order to bring this one home. They run the counter with Cook, and that play going absolutely nowhere as he's belted before he could get out of the backfield. That'll wind up going for a loss of four. And it's going to be third down and a ways to go here. Third and 14. Again, it's Cook. And he'll be brought down at the 21, just shy of the 20 in the red zone. I think we can safely say that those types of players are the backbone of this offense. We know not every run's going to be a big hitter, but you know they'll take that type of result on each and every attempt. So they'll turn to the kicker again. He's been a busy man thus far. On the left hash mark, this a 38-yard attempt. Carlson able to put this one through. And that will extend their lead even further. So it's three more points, and that widens this thing out even further here in the fourth. And you know in this league, you can never have enough points, but this widens it out, as you said, and now it's all about ball control, isn't it? Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. This will be fielded on the back line of the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. And New York set to take the field. And on that last drive, went for it on fourth, turned it over. But good job by their defense, though. They held them to three. But this offense, they've got to be a little bit better, a little bit more careful here. And sometimes when you see these calls on fourth down when they decide to go for it, it's not necessarily the coach saying, I believe in my offense. Sometimes the coach saying, I believe in my defense. I can afford to go for it here because if we don't get it, I don't think we'll give up more than three. And that's exactly what happened there. You think there. that factored in? I do. I think that he had that in his mind going into the game, that I'm going to be aggressive on offense because I know I've got a defense that can hold up their end. So from the 36 now, first and 10. On first and ten, Bridgewater. He's got his man. It's Curse. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. It'll go as a gain of 11 and a Jets first down. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and ten. Bridgewater now looking to throw on first. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. Another wayward pass. You know, things started out poorly in this game, and to be frank, they just really haven't gotten much better. And all that does is embolden a secondary. They feel good about what's going on, and they just play better and better. A second down throw for Bridgewater. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. Anytime a defense can sit back in a zone like that, it tends to create a lot of congestion in the middle of the field. Makes it very hard to slot one in. Looked like I-4 at rush hour in your hometown of Orlando, Florida. An absolute mess. The Jets on third down. They've converted a third of their opportunities. Three for nine. This is third and ten. To the air again with Bridgewater. 
Complete out right to Kurz. And he'll be brought down at the 48-yard line. The completion good for only six, and that'll bring up fourth. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. The tackle is almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays, harder to move it. And that's complete to Walford. And he's corralled, but not before getting it inside the 35. Now, no reason not to try it there, and they do indeed convert on fourth. Felt compelled to go for it there on fourth down, trailing in the fourth quarter. They got it done. And there's always a lot of pressure on a fourth down call. Doesn't matter the distance. You still have to get it done, as you noted, and they did. A first down throw for Bridgewater. Well, noon was got it, complete. And he'll work it inside the 30 to the 29-yard line. That throw good for four. It's second down. Fired that one in there. Able to make connection on a nice in route. With those faster passes and they're going that fast, any hesitation as a quarterback that the deflection, if you miss, might be bigger and lead to an interception? Yeah, and the deflection works both ways. Maybe a defender gets a hand in the way and it pops in the air. And sometimes you throw it so hard your receiver can't handle it, and he pops it up in the air for the defenders to grab as well. But a moot point there is they were able to connect four yards on that last completion, so that sets up second and six. Bridgewater again. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. We have not seen a whole lot of wide open receivers. Everything seemingly has been contested. And that's another nice job there to force an incompletion. They've been very cohesive, knowing each other's moves all game long, and they've been on the spot just about every time. And they've held them in check on the scoreboard. The Jets on third down. They're hitting at just 30%, 3 for 10. This will be third and six. They'll throw again. Bridgewater. And that is incomplete. It was Andrew Sendejo from his strong safety spot able to make the play. Certainly looked like they were getting ready to convert there on third down, but what an effort to get his hand on that one, knock it away, and brings up a fourth down decision. And he's got a noon one. But no reason not to try it there, and they do indeed convert on fourth. Partner, if you and I were playing quarterback in this one, we would be really confident right now throwing it to him, wouldn't we? Yeah, he's been spectacular. He's just saying, hey, I was all state. I'll make it rain out here. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and ten. Boy, and now they can't even get a playoff. Delay of game, offense. And that'll set them back five. Still first down. The delay of game backs him up five, first and 15. After the penalty, it's Carl Allen. And he'll get this down only to the 18. Second down throw for Bridgewater. That's complete over the middle to Anderson. And he's brought down just outside of the 10 at the 11. The reception good for seven. It's third down. Well, if you do read man coverage, Brandon, the drag route's a pretty good one to run against it because you're running away from people on it. And he is caught at the seven-yard line. And he's able to work it here to the eight-yard line. They stop him for only three that time, and that'll bring up fourth down. Well, the strategy was evident there. Get it to your tight end and make it a one-on-one -on -one play with a cornerback. Who's usually going to win that one? The tight end, but not there. Not in this situation. How about the corner defeating that logic and making a really nice tackle? And this will be caught in the end zone. Touchdown, Jets. Clive Walford, his third touchdown now on the year. 
And the Jets are able to close the gap just a bit. Sometimes those tight ends are a mismatch. They found the mismatch there. And that's exactly why you want to draw up those types of plays because coverage is just going to go to the natural guys, the guys that make the big plays on the outside. But if you work your tight end into it, that's a tough one for a defense to handle. Tough. They couldn't handle it. They worked out for six. Santos able to tack on the extra point, and that cuts this lead down to 13. This one taken just inside the 10. And nice work on the return as they'll start their drive just past the 30-yard line. And now out comes Minnesota. And they split the uprights last time for three. They've got the lead. They're not going to play this conservative. They're, they're not hoping for another field goal. They're hoping for a touchdown. I'm with you on that one. I like where your head is. I like the way you're thinking because you're exactly right. Trying to sit on a lead and play that way. That doesn't work too well for most teams. Run your offense. Yeah, Run what you do best. The game. Exactly. Put it all the way down and try to increase your lead in a big way. And the best way to do it, touchdowns. Nice way to start the drive. A gain of 12 and a first down. Well, how about this aggressive approach? Got the lead. Fourth quarter. Continuing to throw the football. Are you thinking about Super Bowl 51? <laughs> Atlanta had the lead against New England, just, and they ended up giving it up. I was going to say, don't say it, but you did say it. it I did, didn't I? Yeah, anybody watching Atlanta, our apologies. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. So he can't hang on, and as I watch that unfold, I remembered an expression that I've heard, maybe from you, I don't know, but you're going to get hit anyways, might as well hold on to the ball. Well, you know a coach said that, right? Yeah. Not an actual player. Not any chance at all. Way easier said than done. That one goes for 13 yards, and it moves the sticks. And I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely, you want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. Right back to him on first down. And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. Yeah, give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. Offensively with the lead, you want to run the ball, keep the clock going, but you also want to still kind of be in attack mode too, right? So how do you do that and not come back on your heels? Yeah, think about all the practices we've watched where they have that tempo period to go over things just like this. Can they describe the scenario, tell you what they're looking for, and make sure that they're still attacking, yet at the same time not going so fast as to leave too much time on the clock. This is something you got to be wary of defensively. I mean, just because they're in the mode of trying to burn some clock doesn't mean they won't pass it, and they got good yardage out of that one. Yeah, and really, when you're looking at it, now they've got a fresh set of downs. Look for second down. If they want to take another shot and try and loosen things up, that'd be the time to do it. So first and 10 now from the 30. Cousins on first down. That's going to be caught, and he'll get into the end zone. Touchdown, Minnesota. Kirk Cousins with three touchdown passes now in the afternoon, and the Vikings are going to add on to their lead. They had the lead in the fourth, but still passing. Finding the big target for the touchdown. Now that lead grows even more. Everybody gets to join in the fun. You know, it doesn't have to just be the wide receivers catching touchdown passes. The tight end doesn't just have to do just the dirty work inside. He gets a chance to get into the end zone as well. Now Cousins going to bring his guys up for the two-point try. From the gun, here's Cousins. And this is going to be caught. So add two more to the lead as they continue to pour it on here in the fourth. So they elect to pass there on the two-point try. Sometimes could prove risky there. It worked out. Yeah, and I love how you bring up that it can prove risky because if you get it intercepted and they return it, that's two points for the defense, but not on that play. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. 
And this will be a touchback as that sails over the end line. Getting set to go here, Teddy Bridgewater and company marches back onto the field. And after a rough start, as we take a peek at the numbers, he's going in the right direction now. So often when you see a game start the way we saw this one start for him, you just wonder if he's got a chance to bring it back at all. And that's exactly what he's done. Love seeing that happen simply because you know a guy has struggled and now he's found a way to make things better. That's pretty good stuff right there. And this one will go to the 28-yard line. The completion good for three and it's second down. It's vitally important to wrap him up immediately because if you let that big guy get ahead of steam up, boy, then you've got real trouble trying to get him down. But they're able to hold him to a short gain on first down. 75 yards receiving for him now. And it's a first down. You can see the time and effort and thought that they put into their passing game because it was evident right there. It looks like a simple pitch and catch, but you and I both know that they have planned for this and worked hard to make it happen. They don't need to run another play here before the two-minute warning. Let's see if they do it anyway. Time for a break. Back to finish it off on EA Sports after this. So it's Jets football as we get you reset here. They've got a first and ten as they search for a late score. Bridgewater on first down. Oh, there's that man again. It's complete. And he'll be brought down right at the 45-yard line. Give him a couple on the catch. It's second and eight. And again, it's Bridgewater. That one's complete to Tomlinson. The Jets are going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll talk it over here before what will be an important third down. From the shotgun, it's Bridgewater. And that's going to be too high. Out of bounds and incomplete. This defense was definitely alert to the possibility of the deep ball, and they were more than ready for it. They've got the lead, fourth quarter. Maybe can expect more passes like that downfield. They'll go with a big bank, Corral. And he's going to have a first down as he's brought down at the 44-yard line. Now, no reason not to try it there, and they do indeed convert on fourth. First down, Bridgewater. Under pressure, and he will go down. Sacked back at the 46. Eric Kendricks in there to get him his second sack now of the afternoon. Bridgewater now on second down. Oh, the pressure too great, and he goes down once more. Now the Jets going to use the second of their three timeouts as they get it with under a minute to go now in the football game. Third and long for Bridgewater. He's going to let it fly. And his pass is intercepted for the fourth time today. Mike Hughes with his first pick in the lead. And he'll get this one out to the 50 to the midfield stripe. Yet another interception, and I just had to double-check my math. But it is now eight between last week and this week. Well, I just used a calculator. I didn't worry about <laughs> double-checking it. But the thing that always throws me when you see quarterbacks in this type of a bad spot, they're trying to figure out what they can do to change it. And sometimes they try too hard, and they never get out of it. And that's where he is right now. He's just locked in in a really bad way. The Vikings offense now heading out to take over. They come into enemy territory, and I don't care what the matchup is in the National Football League. You're up like this late in the game on the road. This feels pretty good. Oh, it feels fantastic. Anytime you get a road victory in the NFL, that's a big-time accomplishment. And to do it this convincingly, that just tears up the script that every home team has, which is nobody comes into our house and pushes us around. They took care of business today. Yeah, they pushed around, and now the final stages of this one. On the carry, it's Cook. 
And he might have got this across midfield, not by much. They'll mark it down at the 49. I know the speed is the hallmark of today's NFL game, but the key to good rushing defense is still having your linebackers set the edge. Well, Charles, it's one thing to win. It's another thing to win and put up the amount of points that they did. Boy, were they clicking on offense. They can't help but feel great about themselves, can they? I mean, what a game to put up that number of points, continually feeling like they're moving the ball and things are working and clicking. They think that they can bottle this and carry it with them. And as an offensive coordinator, you just don't think you can do anything wrong. Whatever you call, run, pass, it's all going to work. That's called being in the zone. So for the Vikings, they're into the win column for the third time this year as they get the victory here. And they'll return home next week to take on the New Orleans Saints. Meanwhile, for the Jets, they fall a game under the 500 mark at 3-4 and four through seven games. And they'll try and turn things around next week as they have a date at Soldier Field with the Chicago Bears. And for Charles Davis and our entire crew here at EA Sports, I'm Brandon Gordon saying so long, everybody.